Hello and welcome to the Fix It Shed. Today I'm going to be installing a reverse osmosis water filter system uh, in my kitchen. We have well water and there's uh, some traces of nitrates. Uh, they're not to the dangerous level, but we still want to uh, put in a filter system to try and eliminate what we can. So this is an A.O. Smith uh, RO4000. Uh, why did I choose this particular reverse osmosis system? Uh, honestly, it's because I went into Lowe's and this is what they had. Also, this video is not sponsored. I purchased this water filter system myself and I'm just showing you the installation process. So step one in setting up the uh, reverse osmosis system is making sure you have all the parts. So this isn't um, a system that you can just run to the hardware store and get any parts if you're missing. So you want to make sure that you have everything when you, you, know, when you get started. Okay, so I've unpacked the filter system and the, uh, I went through the list of what should be contained in it, and I actually found this piece was missing. So this is just a little 90 degree elbow thing, but it's not something that, it's a pretty specialized thing. It's not something you can just run to the hardware store and pick one up, I don't think. Um, and uh, in the A.O. Smith manual, where you look for, where you look for the part list, um, there is a phone number if you're missing anything you can call. Uh, I called their customer support hotline and they identified the missing part uh, and they shipped it out to me. It did take about two weeks for me to receive it but uh, but they were very good about um, replacing the missing part. Well I gathered up the tools and supplies that the directions say that I'm gonna need. So now that we've verified that we have everything let's get started. As you'll see later a pair of pliers may come in handy too. Okay, so the first thing that they want you to do is make sure that you find a place to put your tank and stuff. Make sure that you have enough room underneath. And when I started doing that, like this, we've just moved in here. And it has a lot of new plumbing. I wasn't expecting to see, you know, copper pipes actually. There's a lot of vinyl downstairs. And these valves those kind of valves I've never had much luck with. It seems like, uh, you know, they're nice when you put them in, they work, and then they sit for 10 years without being used, and then you can't turn them or they leak or something. So. On the bright side, I do have this distribution system for the water, so I can, this is, you know, for the kitchen sink, so I can just turn off the water here, so that works out nicely. You see all these, you know, PEX tubing? That's kind of what I was expecting to see under the sink. I wasn't expecting to see a uh, copper pipe. Okay. Back under the sink. The other thing that might be a problem is this, because you have this bar here, and the filters are going to hang down. So i got to see if that interferes with the filters. Uh, actually, I don't think this is going to go like this. I think... This is gonna be over that way because I'm gonna need I'm gonna need some more space than that. So it's gonna be over here. So now I'm gonna try I'm gonna break out the filters and see if uh, see if they interfere. See if this piece of wood interferes. If not, I'll just have to put another piece of wood in there. So I don't have to worry about screwing through this cabinet because there's a, a gap here in between this cabinet and this cabinet. So I don't have to worry about screws going through to the other side. Oh, it stands off enough that it won't be a problem. Good, so I can just screw right into this. Although that sounds pretty thin, doesn't it? Step one is to get this brass fitting in here. So I've got a drip pan in place and a towel to catch any water that comes out. And uh, I'm going to use, I have a line wrench instead of the adjustable to try, since this is kind of messed up, ow, messy. Oh, it's not too bad.
Okay, so this quarter inch white tubing needs to go into the end of there. Into the end of the brass T fitting that we just installed. Now, so we need to get this nut on here, thread it in that way, the compression sleeve on the outside of the hose, and this piece on the inside. Uh, I decided I wanted to put a board in here to uh, fasten the filter manifold to um, just to make it a little bit more secure and I don't want to fasten it here but I want a little bit something a little bit more substance than the uh, than the wall of this. You don't want to get too close to the wall. You've got an outlet or an inlet there, or an outlet maybe, and you got two on this side, so probably right around there. So next we need to put the faucet in. We got a space for it right there. comes off and the rubber piece stays on top. Alright. So this is the on off switch, it stays to the back, so it should be alright. better than I can doing this by feel. Okay, so the white 3 8 inch tubing coming from the faucet needs to go to the, remineral, the bottom of the remineral, remineralizer. Uh, and then we're going to have to cut that off and then the rest is going to be used to go from the manifold to the tank. Which means that I'm not going to have enough to put the tank where I want it. So I'm going to move the tank to a different spot. But I'm going to need to cut this right about there. Now this is long enough to get us down here, hopefully, yeah. into there. I'm not ready to do that yet, though. And then, yeah. and then I have this loop left over to, to reach from the manifold up here over to the tank, which I was hoping to put over there. 
but uh, I don't think I have enough hose for that, so it's going to have to be closer. Now we need to wrap. They supplied some plumber's tape. We need to wrap that around the thread. And it says count or clockwise in a clockwise direction. And we need to hand tighten the connector on top. So now we got to use this 3 8 inch white tubing to connect from where it says tank on the manifold to the tank here. So really, you just press it in. That's it. And that's in. And then I need this cap for here. And that goes in there. And that feeds in. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna, can I reroute this a little bit differently? There we go. That kind of keeps it up and out of the way. All right, now we need to install the drain connector, which is this piece, which is gonna connect this hose. Now, it would be convenient, like, you need to install it on a vertical pipe. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to fit there. It's just barely going to fit over here. And I do have enough hose to reach over there. So we're going to put it over on this one. Seven thirty seconds hole. So now we're on to step six. We need to connect this quarter inch white hose. There's an inlet in the back. Uh, you know, it looks very similar to these guys up here. Uh, I don't know, I don't think you can see it. I don't know if you can see it back there or not. But we're just going to try and feel our way in there. Let's see. Maybe in there. You do want to be careful when you're cutting this because you want it to be as square as possible. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. see if we can get it in without seeing. Yep. That feels like it's in there pretty good. And we need to connect from here 
from the manifold to the remineralizer. And that, they just give you this little piece of red hose here. So it's actually probably not a bad size because I only need to go, let's see. Well, let's put this end in. That's in. down to about here. Where'd my little mix go? There's that. Uh, I don't think. Well, yeah. That'll be alright. What's next? Remineralizer to faucet. The 3 8 cents white tubing, that's this one. There we go. That's all the way in. Quarter inch red tubing from faucet. So that's this one. So this is, this is the RO membrane. Right, and it has a port on the back of and the bottom. Okay, so I need these two to go into the end of this one, but I think this is going to be a bit long. Okay. Okay, so yeah, this needs to go in the back here. Okay, so the flow restrictor needs to go into this hole hose like that and then the whole thing goes in here okay and then that is all going to just pop in the back of that filter that. All right, now we need to install the filters. Uh, go back up to the top here. Okay. filters are installed. We are on to step eight where we have to sanitize the system. So now we have to go back up here and we have to remove this white line. And to do that you just kind of press in and if you hold the black, like there's this black thing here, if you hold that in while you pull on the tubing you can get the tubing back out. Now I need to put three milliliters of bleach into that tube. Okay, so they do provide you with this handy eyedropper to get three milliliters of bleach to put into the hose. Uh, so you don't have to go looking for something. Okay. There's the rest of it. Nope. Now reconnect the white hose all the way back in. So it says that the sanitation will be complete during the following pressure test and purge. Uh, important that the bleach must be completely removed from system before drinking the water. The next is the pressure test. Okay, let's turn the water on. See how the see if it leaks anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Oh, the back one. <clears throat> right, this back here? Yeah. Let's see. Try again. Ready? Okay. So now it says that we need to run water to make sure purge all the air out of the system. That seems to be okay. It does gurgle while it's pressurizing. Got another leak in the system to tighten up. Okay, so in the directions, there's a picture of pliers tightening this, but there weren't any pliers on the tools that you're going to need list. So I didn't have tools in the I didn't have pliers in the house with me. Ugh. So I just did it hand tight. So don't forget, you're going to need a pair of pliers. Alright, let's try that. See if that's tight enough. Go we'll turn the water back on. pretty good for now. We will keep an eye on it, see if it starts leaking again. Alrighty, it's been two hours. I don't see any more leaks. Everything looks dry. So now we're ready to purge the system. And we do that by running the water for 24 hours. check back tomorrow. After letting the water run for 24 hours to purge the system and then a few hours to allow it to rebuild pressure in the system, we now have filtered water. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it useful, please be sure to like it. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you. Take care.